All right, ladies and gents, welcome back. Today we're going to get into the second half of our ninth unit here in our CPM Common Core Algebra text, where we're starting to talk about inequalities. And you can see in our book that uh, we're through the nine ones. And now we journey and venture into the nine twos, where inequalities show up. And my experience with students tells me they've already seen some things like this before. But the exploration of inequalities allows us to answer the question, well, what if we're dealing with two things that aren't necessarily equal? And um, we've got uh, some, some modified notes here, but I'm going to be starting with problem 4-95 for the purposes of our video today. So <clears throat> we've got uh, uh, quantities um, in an inequality, and they look different from that in the equation. Um, and here, here's what I would... I would highlight or, or, or ask you to focus on. If you have an equation like x equals 3, that is the uh, situation where you are being told there is one solution, exactly one solution. That is the solution 3. Okay? Um, but if you have an inequality like x is greater than or equal to 2, right? This symbol right here is our greater than or equal to symbol. We've got a less than or equal to symbol that opens the other way. And then, of course, we have strictly greater than and strictly less than. And those things look like that. Okay, if you have a situation where x is greater than or equal to 2, that involves many solutions. Uh, I'm sorry, negative 2. Um, that involves many solutions because look at what numbers are, are greater than or equal to negative 2. Well, integers alone, right? Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Which one are we talking about? And we don't always know without some context. Okay, but what we do know is that there are many, many, many solutions there anything bigger than or equal to negative 2, right? We've got a situation here in B, right? How many solutions does an inequality such as x is less than or equal to 1 have? And the answer is many, many. The answer is a lot, a lot of solutions, right? Um, and some of you might even uh, understand that it's infinitely many, right? There's our there's our infinity symbol, right? The um, the idea there is that we could have integers, we could have decimals, we could have fractions, right? And if you've ever considered all of the numbers in between zero and one, right? There's a there's a fascinating math consideration there. Okay, um, in part C, you have a compound inequality. Some of us have seen this before, but we're talking in this case about all of the numbers all the ways for x to vary in between negative 1 and positive 4. Holy cow, there's tons of numbers in there. There's the integers, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And there's also all those decimals. There's also all those fractions, right? There's so many options there. And how many is that? Okay, tons, right? But you see how that's different. It's got a bound on both ends, right? It's got a bound down here, it's got a bound up here, whereas this only had one bound, right? Okay, uh, we do ask uh, this situation, um, what is what about the result if x squared is greater than or equal to 4? This is going to provide another inequality that's compound, and the situation here would uh, open up the option um, where you had, for example, um, to get x all by itself, okay? Um, and, and that's the way we can, we can do that. Um, if you go like this and you go like that, right, to, to get the x by itself, and then you'd have x and then greater than or equal to the square root of 4 is, is 2. Okay, now it, it's not that simple. Okay, it's not strictly um, that easy, right, and we're going to talk about it. The reason it's not just that simple is because all of those squared values have to be bigger than or equal to 4. And the the way that we do that, I'm going to get rid of this just for a second, is by taking the, and, and some of you guys remember, there, there are two options that when we square will give us 4. They are both positive 2 and negative 2. Now, now consider this just for a moment. All of the numbers that are bigger than 2, 3, 4, etc., all of those numbers, bigger than or equal to 2, I guess, um, those when we square will be bigger than or equal to 4. Okay, so I'm just going to go like this, right? That is one possible solution. But all of the numbers that are less than or equal to negative 2, when we square them, those are the ones that are going to give us something that is bigger than or equal to 4. Like negative 3, when we square it, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 
9 is bigger than or equal to 4. So we actually have to do something like that. And there are two possible solutions, and it is one or the other. This is a different kind of compound inequality that we maybe have some experience seeing, but if not, we will get to. Okay. The second part of our investigation before we take this and apply this is going to be looking at a graphical situation and applying it. We've got a couple different graphs here, and we're just going to talk about the way that we write an inequality for a graph is by first identifying the boundary. In this case, the boundary is right here. It's denoted with a dot. Because the dot is at 1, I'm going to mark down a 1, and then I like to indicate which way the shading is going. It's going this way, of course, 2, 3, 4, etc. Those are all values that are bigger than or equal to. So I'm going to use my greater than or equal to sign. The reason I know it's or equal to is because the dot at 1 is shaded, and then I will use x because they, of course, give me variable x there. Okay? If I slide over and use b to move on, right? Again, the boundary is at 1, but look at that dot. That dot is an open dot indicating that 1 is not a solution on my graph. So we can go up to 1, but we can't use 1. Okay, and then where is my shading? My shading is that way. It is to the left of 1. Those are all values that are less than. So here's my less than symbol. And again, they've identified x, so I'm going to use x as less than 1. Move on to letter C. Where is my boundary? My boundary is right there at 3. You guys can see the dot. It is filled in, so it is going to be the or equal to variety. And which way are we shading? We're shading to the left again, so that is going to be less than or equal to. And one more time, it's x. There's one left here. I've got two boundaries. Holy cow, I've got a boundary right here. I've got a boundary right here. So I'll put a 2 here. I'll put a negative 4 right there. Those I'm, I've got to have them both in there. And this is the nice part about this kind of graph. It is the compound inequality where x is between those values because the shading is in between those values. So I'll put my x in the middle. And in this case, my x is less than or equal to 2, but it's also got to be bigger than 4. And there's a way to say that. We can say that negative 4 is less than x, but that's the same thing as saying x is greater than negative 4. Both of those things are uh, the same. Okay, let's go ahead and start the application of some of this, and we're going to do it with this problem that we have here in 9-47. It says, with your study team, find at least 5x values that make this inequality true, right? How many solutions are there? Well, I'm going to let you guys know that we solve an equation almost exactly like we solve an inequality, and here there's going to be no exception, right? We're, we're trying to get the x by itself here, okay? So I'm going to start by using those rules of linear solving, right? The uh, rules of, of adding the opposite, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Um, I'm sorry, I said adding the opposite. I, here I'm adding the opposite, but uh, inverse operations, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, I add 5 to both sides, and I get uh, greater than or equal to, I've got 2x, right? And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Some of you guys know there is a rule for the sign. We're not going to encounter that here, but um, we'll talk about it. Let me get greater than or equal to 4, okay? So I, I get a, a solution. Any solution is going to be greater than or equal to 4. So how many solutions are there? Again, many, many, right? There's going to be tons, okay? What is the smallest solution for x? Well, we already identified that as the boundary point, and you've heard me say that with the last couple of problems. In this case, it is 4, okay? It says, what is the significance of the boundary point um, and, uh, and what is the uh, relationship with the inequality? And I'm looking at letter C here. Now, we remember that that boundary point is 4. Now, watch this. If I plug that boundary point in for x, okay, instead of x there, I put in the 4, right? 2 times 4 is 8, and then 8 minus 5 is 3. This happens to be the smallest value that in this inequality makes it true. Okay? Is 3 greater than or equal to 3? Absolutely. It, it satisfies the equal to portion, right? Um, it also happens to be like if it was just a greater than symbol, happens to identify the um, first value that would uh, make it uh, not true, right? So we just got to be careful there with the, uh, the, the boundaries, right? And then it says, write an inequality that represents the solutions for x on a number line. Highlight the solution for x. Be ready to share your number line with the class. Well, here we're going to take that solution uh, with the boundary point, and we're going to draw it in a number line. And, and these don't need to be anything special for me. Okay. Start with our horizontal line. Okay. I know I need to see 4 on my number line, so why don't I start with just like 
zero right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I might even just label every other, right? Because because we can. Now, in CPM, you saw the, the books there, they labeled uh, or they drew the number lines on the, um, they drew the inequalities on the number lines. I don't necessarily like to do that. Sometimes it clutters them up. So make it clear, in my opinion, what your boundary point is. My boundary point's four, so I'm gonna put my dot right above four. And because it's a greater than or equal to, I'm gonna shade in that dot because I know four is a possible solution. And then we just need to shade the direction greater than, like which, which direction are we talking about? All the numbers that are bigger than four are the numbers over here. And because this continues, we do want to have an arrow on the end of it, right? Because much like my number line continues here, my inequality shading is going to need to continue as that number line continues, right? Because 10 is not on my number line yet, right? If I extended it, it would be, but 10 is a number that's bigger than or equal to 4, okay? Um, last thing that we have for you in this video is going to be um, what you see in 9-48. And there's not a lot of work to do here, but we are going to talk about the um the process right that's that's what this is all about okay um and in part a you know they give us an inequality to consider um and uh this inequality that we're gonna uh consider in this case um does have us doing some solving with that rule that i mentioned right so i've got it right there i'm going to subtract three from both sides and then we've got negative two x and then we've got you know less than um one minus three is negative two and here's what happens we've got to divide by a negative in this case now these cancel right and that's all good they technically cancel over here but negative two divided by two is one but here's the situation because we're dividing by a negative we have to go ahead and we have to flip our sign because all of these are the things that are going to make our original expression true and we'll talk about that here in just a second but let's look at this the key point is to start by finding the boundary point done Okay, we, we definitely did that. How quickly can we solve? Well, we kind of did that over here on the left-hand side, and um, we just use our, our traditional rules for algebra, okay? Decide if the boundary point is part of the solution to the inequality. In this case, it is not, because it is a greater than. So that means we are gonna have an open circle, and that's true here, okay? And then finally, to decide on which side of the boundary the solutions lie, choose a point to test in the inequality. So in this particular case, I'm just gonna real quick draw that number line. I know I need, ooh, that's a bad arrow. I know I need one on there. So I'm going to put zero in the middle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm just going to go every other again, right? Okay. And I know I, I have that boundary point at one right there. So there's my open circle. Now what values make this true? Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and test right here. So the point we're gonna test is two, right? And that's why I got that red star. I'm just testing, I'm not shading there, right? So here we go. I'm just gonna say three minus two times two is less than one. And I'm kind of asking, is that a true situation? Three minus two times, well, that's minus four. Is that less than one, right? Three minus four is negative one. And that is, I can confirm, check, that is less than one. So I know I wanna shade that direction. And that is why we flipped that sign. And maybe you want to make your shading like that. And I'm sorry, that's red, not blue. Um, likewise, I could test the other direction as well. If I wanted to test this point, just to confirm that it doesn't work. Zero is a great number to test. Three minus two times zero. Is that less than one? Question mark. Uh, two times zero is just zero. Uh, so this is three minus zero and well three is less than one that is not true and that's how I know I do not want to shade there to the left okay so what you see there are some you know steps for solving an inequality steps for talking about how to shade um, some people shade this direction but the key is we have the appropriate type of circle we have the appropriate direction for shading and we're remembering those rules for when we divide by a negative we are flipping that sign okay um, ladies and gentlemen there is a little bit of review preview here we want you to address right just a couple problems right there is going to be some repetition however you should be trying these things looking for questions and getting those questions out i appreciate your time today thanks for watching have a great day